this is Outdated, and welcome back to Outdated Reviews. And today, we are going to look at the Call of Cthulhu starter set by Chaosium Entertainment. Or, I'm sorry, Chaosium Incorporated. My bad. Um, all you need to enjoy horror role-playing. So we are going to take a look at this starter set from a venerable gaming icon. This is the 7th edition starter set. The uh, re-release with the newer, more modernish cover. But before we do that, we really should get a word from our sponsors. Unlike last time, where apparently we didn't actually have a sponsor, this time we have a spot. What? You're you kidding me? Uh, seriously? We don't. Okay, okay. All right. We're sponsored by that guy who puts that sign up selling free fill or selling fill dirt from his yard, not realizing I'm standing on dirt and it's free. That guy. That, uh, whoever he is. Or girl. I don't judge. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is the Call of, du Call of Duty. Call of Cthulhu starter set. So first off, I want to talk about the size of this starter set. So let's look at the starter set we looked at two reviews ago. Symbol, okay? Now we already knew this thing was thick, right? Because there's always are. Let's go ahead and put it on here, and I'm meeting up the corners here, and you're gonna see there's a definite difference in size. First off, Call of Cthulhu is longer, right? Symbol room is much thicker. Cthulhu has a slight edge in width. So it's a little wider, a decent bit taller, but it's thinner, okay? So let's just do a quick reminder on what I expect in a starter set to get a passing score of seven or above, okay? One, I need an adventure. Because if it's a starter set, I need to be able to, you know, start. Two, I need dice. Assuming the game uses dice, of course. Three, I need characters to play on that adventure. And four, I need some sort of a simplified version of the rules that I can get up and run and play in. Okay? So let's see what Call of Cthulhu starter set gives us. So first we're going to open this thin box up. And this very nice quality... Yeah, I'd say this cardboard is right up there with the free leagues as far as how firm it is. Nice. So right off, we have what's in the box. And you know what? Since I'm about to literally show you what's in the box, I'm not going to read this whole thing. And on the back, we have <laughs> the Chaosium. I, they used to go by the Chaosium back in the day. I have no idea what this is. It's more of an advertisement. And then, so let's just keep moving. All right. We have one thing down, dice. So let's take a look at what it gives us. And why is one of them blue? So if you saw my review of the Call of Cthulhu Keeper's Rulebook, you kind of know the basics of how the game works, right? You have a stat or a skill, and that number is this number from 0 to 100. And you roll percentage dice, and you need to roll that number or below, okay? So let's say my skill's 70%. I rolled a 20. I hit, right? See? 20. And then this one was a 0, so it's, it's 20. Right? So that's how it works. That, that's it. That's the game, right? Now, probably wondering, dude, why is there a blue one? Somebody colorblind or something? No. If I have a bonus die or a penalty die... I will roll the blue ten-sided and the yellow, and I will take, depending, if I am if I got an advantage, if I have the advantage, I'll take the lower number, because that's better. If I have a disadvantage, I'll take the higher number. So, boom. Same thing, 62 or 82. If my skill is a 70, uh, 62 is definitely better than that. That's a success versus a failure. I'm taking that, and we're done, right? Then you got your other dice, you know, your four-sided, eight-sided, six-sided, 20-sided, You'll notice there's no 12-sided. Call of Cthulhu does not use 12-sided. So um, even though for many, many years, including now, you will be able to buy 
Call of Cthulhu thing dice with a 12 sided, the game doesn't actually use them. So it's just there if you want to like flex, I guess. I think that's what the kids say today. Flex and say, oh, look at me. I have a dime focused on a game that doesn't even use that die. Ooh, either way. So I've got my dice. Yay. What's this? Alone against the flames. So what we have here is my phone beeping in the background. First off, this paper, very nice quality. It's glossy, just a little. But the background on this looks more like parchment and it kind of like makes the gloss less glaring, which is nice. They're saddle, st this is saddle staple, right? Got some nice art and this is, for lack of a better term, a choose your own ad path adventure that teaches you how to play Call of Cthulhu. So one of my requirements is that I have a set of rules that I can understand. I've played through this adventure. I've actually keepered or GM'd this adventure a couple of times after that because my um, people that were making the characters weren't used to that kind of thing. So I just kind of, for lack of a better term, DM'd them, right? So I've gone through this thing multiple times. This does an amazing job of teaching you the rules. And here's the kicker. It teaches you to make a character too. So normally I don't expect to find character creation in a starter set, but we have it here and we have the adventure here. So having character creation makes it so that having free gens isn't as big of a deal, right? But this thing starts there and goes all the way to the back. All one big happy adventure. We're looking at like Jeez, 50, 53 pages? Is it 54 pages? How many pages is this thing? 54 pages of adventure. Actually, it goes on to the back cover, 55, right? 55 page adventure. So there's my adventure that teaches me the rules, and I create a character, and I've already got the dice. I've already got my seven out of 10. Just with this book and this. I'd be happy, okay? But now, introductory rules. 23 pages of basic rules of the game and a little more detail on character creation. See, creating your investigator. More details on the skills. How to look, how to look at the dice. How sanity works. How combat works. You're just like solidifying that seven. I mean, we're already bumping up a little bit, I think. Rewards for success, where to go after. And next, what do we have? Book three, Paper Chase and Other Adventures. Other Adventures? Yes. Not only does this game come with the starter adventure to teach you how to play, which is what I want to have, it comes with three more complete adventures. That's a total of four adventures in a starter set. Four. I have a, one of the adventures in here, Edge of Darkness, is considered one of the best first adventure Call of Cthulhu Adventures, and I've actually run it, and I would have to agree. It is a really good look at what it means to play Call of Cthulhu, um, and you're getting that right there. So, like, I used Alone Against the Flames, which was the um, solitaire one, to teach myself the rules and to help people make their characters, but when they played for the first time together, I used Edge of Darkness, and it is really good at that especially for people who are um, more familiar with combat-focused games. Um, this is not that, and it allows you to kind of see what that's like. It allows you to, like, get a good start for a party. Plus, they have two more. Paper Chase, which I think is quite good and very different. And then uh, Graveyard Stomp, which is probably the weak link of these. But to be honest, if Graveyard Stomp were the only adventure in this set it would still get a passing grade. It's still a decent adventure. It just pales in comparison to the other three, right? Um, so you've got, that's three book. How big is this thing? We got ads in the back. Yeah, we gave us 77 pages plus a couple of ads, right? Plus look here in case we don't want to go through Alone Against the Flames to create our characters. We've got some pre-gens, one, two, three, four, 
five pre-generated characters that you can pick up and use. Okay, full disclosure, this actually also came with six, or is it four? Let me double check. It doesn't say here, it's on the other sheet, but it came with some, uh, oh, it's four. Four starting character sheets that you can create characters on. I've actually already used those. But, I mean, they basically look like this, except without the color. It's just white. And you can um, fill it out. But So you have them to make characters, plus you have pre-made characters, including Jesse Williams, Keiko Kane, Louis, Louise Russo, Nevada Jones. I wonder who he's supposed to be, right? They probably use CGI to make him look younger. And then, who's this last one? Wentworth Averbury, or what I like to call Alfred on a bad day. Okay, now we've got, look at this. Handouts, color handouts from the adventures that are included. These are very high quality paper too. High gloss, they only use one side. So you got this, this. These are all handouts. And one thing about a Call of Cthulhu adventure since it's investigation based, there's two different handouts there. You use a lot of handouts. Two different ones there as well. Three different ones on that sheet. Waste not, want not. And honestly, all of these, and I just showed you all of these, and this are all to that Adventure Edge of Darkness. Then we get to Graveyard Stomp with these two. And this one. This map is actually to the Paper Chase. This map is actually to. Um, Edge of Darkness. I want to say this is to Graveyard Stomp, as is this, as is this. Wait, is it? Yeah. As is this. Okay, and that's what we have in here. So a huge amount of pages of handouts. Four blank character sheets to make characters on. Five pre-gen character sheets. A book with three ready-to-play adventures, a thin book of like rules that gets into a little more detail, another playable adventure you can play on your own to learn, a set of dice, and a what's in here sheet. That is a lot of stuff in one box, in this one box. And really, the only complaint I can give is it's not the same size as the other boxes on the shelf. It kind of sticks out. You know, it's kind of a little taller than everybody else. Everybody else is, like, coming to here. And he's like, look at me, I'm taller than you. That's about the only complaint I have. This is... Okay. This was a really fast review. I'm kind of surprised it went this quick. I think this is an example of where I was excited. Because I've seen some amazing starter sets since I got back into RPGs recently. The Alien starter set with, that I reviewed, like I think I was on my third episode of this, was so good. That got me into RPGing again. This is better. This is so much better that I honestly, there is no flaw in this presentation, in this package, that is worth taking even a iota of points away. This is a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. And I think it's important to point out that all of this, Four adventures, four character sheets, five pre-gens, tons of handouts, rules, a way to, I mean, like, dice. You have everything you need besides a flipping pencil and some friends, right? And in the case of Alone Against the Flame, the solitary adventure, you don't even need the friends. $25. Right there. All right. It's not zooming in or it doesn't focus in super well, but you can see in the code. $25. And right there. $24.99. This is a 10 out of 10. If you want to try Call of Cthulhu and getting the Keeper's rule book seems a little bit much at the moment, right? Spend the $25 or honestly, if you go to places like um, like Gamer's Roll or Amazon or any of those things, you're probably going to get it cheaper, right? Get this, play it with your friends. You've got multiple adventures to play with. Just remember, and this is important, and you need to let them know what I said last time. In Call of Cthulhu, 
your character's survival is not primary. Your characters will die. Some will go insane. Some may go insane and become villains and end up being keeper-controlled characters, right? You have to recognize that you're playing a horror game. If no one can die, it's not very scary, right? So you just need to be prepared for that. But just to treat these adventures as one-shots alone is worth the $25. But this you could literally play for, depending on how often you get together with your friends, you're going to get a minimum of four, if not eight sessions out of this if you... Okay, yeah, well, only it's fine would just be you, and it'd probably be one session, so never mind. You're going to get a minimum of four and a maximum of maybe seven sessions out of this. And that's without even going out and getting other adventures. Because there's one in the Quick Start Guide that's a, like an absolute classic. If you do get the Keeper's Book, it comes with two more. If you get the DM screen or Keeper screen, it comes with two more, right? They're so easy. There's a bunch of them online for free from Chaosium that are really good adventures. So... That includes the Quick Start guys, actually. Um, check this out. Whatever you do, this is an absolute must-buy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, this video, uh, give it a like, subscribe, uh, you know, hit that notification bell. This is like a reboot for me as far as like an online presence after what happened, and I'm doing my best here. But this, things like this is where I found my solace telling stories to overcome things, telling stories to explore new ideas. Um, this is a story worth telling. And I will see you on the next episode of Outdated Reviews. Peace.